What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Brand and Shred. Guys, you can see his face. And if you don't already know the legend, I say legend, I, I don't use the word legendary very often, but if you know Kevin Perenio, if you know KP, you know this guy, not only is probably like truly, not only one of my greatest friends, best friends in the industry, but this dude is brilliant. Plus, he's leading by example. He's leading by building a brand that is absolutely undisputably probably one of the most recognized brands, personal brands in the entire mortgage industry. So super excited to have KP on the show today. And again, if you guys don't know him, he's the chief lending officer at PRMG. But actually, I want to get into this. KP, how long have you been in the business now? You've been in the industry a long time, man. Yeah. Well, thank you for that intro. You, you almost made me blush. I appreciate that. Uh, you you do a good job. Um, well, look, 20 years, man. Uh, April was 20 years. And I started as a wholesale account executive in Austin, Texas, and you know worked my way up through just three companies and part owner in the last two. So uh, it's been uh, it's been a fun ride. And, and it has been. And it, again, if you Anybody who knows KP when he says it's been a fun ride, do you enjoy the mortgage industry? Like, I don't know if there's anybody who actually enjoy. Like, I, I love you, show your show. Like, yeah, yeah, it's it's. But you, of all people, if you've ever hung out with you at an event or you just see your energy, your enthusiasm, I mean, you can only fake it so much. You just you just love it. Like you do, you enjoy the people. You this is you've made a career out of this. You enjoy what you do. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'd say being genuine and being who you are and not having to put on a suit and tie and act like something you're not, you know, like that's, that's not me. And I did that for, for quite some time actually in this business. And I thought that's what you're supposed to do. And when I get it, there's a level of professionalism that people expect, especially when stakes get higher, your company gets bigger and you're dealing with bigger cap markets partners. But man, I, I just, I'm like you, man, I like to go to shows and, you know, get belly to the bar and hang out with people and rub elbows and just, you know, you know, the only time I'm not myself, honestly, is when I'm, totally exhausted and I'm taking espresso shots. <laughs> I, I, I think that's kind of faking it a little bit. You know, I'm, I need a little pick me up, but, uh, on that, man, I'm just, uh, I try and put it all out there and just be, be myself. Do you really do, but that's what I love about you. And that's when, when it, specifically this show is all about talking about your personal brand. That's just what it is. Like you you are who you are. There is no fake KP. I don't think anybody, I think that's what people appreciate about you and respect about you is there's, Hey, it's you, you know, when you need to, you know, put on a suit and tie, you know, when you need to, you can dress down like we're doing now. So why don't I wear a suit and tie? Just weddings and funerals now, man. No more suits and ties, only weddings and funerals. That's, that's my, my rule. I think that's actually really good. Weddings and funerals. Like, I think that's probably one of those things where it's, there's enough respect level. I don't know. Some weddings I've been to recently, man, some of these millennial weddings, I feel like if I wear a suit and a tie, I'm like way overdressed. So that's a whole nother conversation to be at. But I want to talk about, again, your personal brand. You Going to these shows, I want to kind of go down this road for a second and we'll come back to a few other things. But going to these shows, having, like you said, that those belly to belly conversation, rubbing elbows, you know, those late night conversations, those deep, real conversations. How is that important for the KP brand? And and ultimately being with PRMG, how is that helping you personally, your brand? And how does that help the PRMG brand? You, you know, it's funny is I've never really like thought of it in terms of my brand, you know. <laughs> And, um, but I, I can see how, um, I can see how if I wanted to go that route and kind of leverage that, you know, uh, that, that it would be, it would be helpful for certain, for certain avenues and certain business ventures. But I, I think I look at it kind of differently. I, I look at it as just communicating in a modern way. Mm -hmm. So, so I think that, you know, I, I naturally come from sales, uh, as a chief lending officer, my main role here is being over sales for all three of our channels. And to me, sales is about communication. And I think that a lot of people think sales is like, you know, how do you get in there and shake a hand and force someone into buying something they don't want to buy? That's not really sales. I mean, we have a lot of very analytical, you know, uh, minds in our business, especially when you see someone transition over from operations into sales. The hump that they're trying to get over is communication. So you and I were having a normal conversation. We're talking. And I think that, you know, I just, I do a lot of that. Maybe too much. You know, I'm not everyone's cup of tea. You know, I, um, you know, I can be a little, um, uh, a little too much energy, you know, for some people, especially like the old guard that likes to sit in the back and kind of hide and not be on social media. But I know that 
even those people, those leaders, they're still communicating. I mean, they're still, you know, they still want to ingest content, even though they're not speaking, you know, back uh, with me or anyone directly. So I think, you know, it's always nice to just have uh, someone who's a C-level executive and owner kind of being out there and collaborating and working with other people and being, you know, as open and transparent and honest as I possibly can be. Dude, I'm so glad that you went down this route because I I have actually had with companies we've worked with, people know that you and I have a pretty close relationship. I've had I've had people ask me, you know, I I wish I could do what KP does. I wish I could be as comfortable as he is on camera I, with your dollars and cents, which we'll talk about here in a minute. You just do a great job with it. And what's funny is you and I, you and I have done this for a long time now. We've been doing this for years. I mean, you were one of my first guests on one of my first back when I was doing the daily LO life. And from what my you know my brands that have have evolved, but people are just, they admire you. I, I would say jealousy is just the wrong word. They admire you for being authentic because sometimes, like you said, our industries, we have a lot of brilliant people. We have a lot of thinkers in our industry and executives in particular. Sometimes they just overthink it. Sometimes they're just like, oh, like I've got to be this person when I'm on camera or as soon as that light goes on, I've got to be this person. But if you're just, if you are who you are, which again, you do so perfectly, there's no like, there's no faking it then it just comes off as that natural person. It comes off that person that people like. People love to be, I've never heard anybody, KP, and I can say, no, nobody's ever like, oh, I don't want to hang out with KP. That guy's just too much. I, that guy's just too much for me. Like, you're that guy that everybody's like, man, I want to hang Like, he's that guy I want to hang out with. I want to rub up with him. But that, that it ultimately is like, uh, it's funny because we don't correlate our brand with that. But I always tell people, your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. So many people think about it as like a, a shred or a slogan or this or that, but it really, it's our reputation. That's what our brand is. Well, and I, 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 I love, I love the fact that you're kind of going down this path because again, you know, you're saying brand and that's how it comes across, you know, from a, from a marketing perspective. But I, I just, I would then pull it back to saying to any one of those executives that are, that are saying that or anyone at any level, you're just having a conversation. What it, what is it that when, when people say to you, like, I don't, I don't like how I look on camera. And you always say, well, I got news for you. You're not going to like how you look when you're talking to someone face to face. So what's the difference? And so I think people like they see these screens and the cameras and they, they see your microphone there or wherever you're over here. And they're like, they're like, you know, it's such a production. And, and they, they just go into like public speaking mode, which is really, it's not spiders and snakes. People are like fearful of public speaking. Dude, we're just having a normal conversation. I mean, unless you're talking to someone who's truly shy that doesn't speak right. to other human beings, then it's it's just trying to get their mind to think of this like you're just having a conversation, except you're recording it. And, you know, then you get to let other people watch the conversation or watch what you say. It really is that simple. It, it And does it come with practice? Of course it comes with practice. I mean – Sort of speaking hard words or learning another language or trying to understand what, you know, what's on a 1003. I mean, it's all, you know, it all comes naturally over time. And, and, and again, I still think at the end of the day, it's just communicating. And, I, and I'll just say one more thing. Um, I, I do try and be, you know, friends with everybody. You know, I mean, of course I say, you know, stuff about, you know, I hate the Yankees and <laughs> I want to kick their butts and, you know, rocket mortgage. They want to put us out of business when we will screw them. But, you know, at the end of the day, like that's kind of tongue in cheek stuff. I mean, you know, there's plenty of business to go around. We're all here. Um, there's some great people at every company. And, um, and so what I think, like, let's, let's get real basic when it comes to communication. If I see you, what you want from me is, is I recognize that you're there. I see you're there, acknowledge it and then move on. That, that is probably the most basic thing that I do on a consistent basis is I truly try and look everyone in the eye at least one time and just say, Hey, you know, give them a smile you know, hands up, like, like disarm them. Like, Hey, I'm not here to fight. You know, it, it, it's, if you just look someone in the eye and, and, and recognize and acknowledge their existence and maybe even have a conversation and listen to them as opposed to speaking, it goes such a long way. Like they walk away and they remember how you made them feel because you, you recognize they were there again. That's all you and I are doing. We're literally just, just being basic, good human beings. And I think that's really all this is. If you want to call it branding or you want to say like it can be leveraged into other stuff, I, I, I like that. And um, and so I think it's a challenge for people to just be an open communicator and be an open person to just to share their world with every human being around them. That's 
that's that's not easy for everyone, I guess. But, you know, I think over time we could all get really good at that and the world would be a better place, not just the industry. I, I like that. And actually, so kind of to build on that, can is good communication, is that part of your brand? Would you say that's part of your brand is good communication? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess if you were to box me into a brand, I mean, I, I try, <laughs> I mean... Um, you know, I, I say, um, a lot, I, I'm a little bit slow at times, you know, uh, but that's so. where I think people have respect for you. Again, sometimes people see my mic and my camera and I'll show my studio. Sometimes the people like they get overwhelmed. They're like, well, if I have to do that, there's no way. But why I have so much respect for you and for dollars and cents, which we're going to talk about here in just a sec is you literally like, it's not a studio production. You can see your backdrop. Like you're literally in your office. You've got in the desert in the desert there in Corona, California. Great, but by the way, it's, it's my it's where my wife grew up. I've told you that before. Corona, That's California. Right. I have wife. She loves the Miguel's Miguel Juniors. Isn't it Miguel's Juniors? Oh Miguel's yeah, Juniors? Still the best dude. fast food uh, yeah. Mexican there is. So good. Bean and rice burrito, dude. Just like her go to when we go to Corona. <laughs> anyway, we did we 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 digress here. But when it when it comes to really being you, when it comes to turning on the camera, like you said, you do it so authentically. Like I said, there's not a production studio and dollars and cents, which I want to start to transition to here now, because that's, it's something that you were not calling it a podcast yet. We're calling it content. One day I'm, I'm going to push you. And we were saying this before, I'm going to push you. It's going to be a podcast one day. You hear, you heard it right here on Brandon Shred, but you started to put out this content. It's, you know, it's called dollars and cents. You put it out every single week. You do, it's like usually about 10 minutes long and it's just great content. And, and to your point, like you said this earlier, it's not, is it always original content? No, but it's things that you like to, how, where did this dollars and cents come to be? Why did it, why did you start sharing this? Why did you start creating this content? Well, I, I've always wanted to just share a lot of the information that I, that I read and I study and I look at, I don't, you know, I don't just read mortgage trade, you know, rags. Actually, I, I the really, the only thing I really read is like, I read rise, rise and shred. It's the first one that comes out. You guys come out first. So I love that. So you come out first, then Kristen blog. And then I read IMF. And then I usually only read the headlines on the housing wire articles and then the national mortgage news. I don't, I'm not, I don't subscribe. They make you pay. So I just don't pay. Um, and, uh, and so, and then, but the stuff I do pay for has to do with like stock subscription services, like a ton of them, like, like a stupid amount, like absurd. If I told you the number, like, I, I don't even want to, do, I'm, a little, I'm a little embarrassed to say it. So I really love trading. I love investing. Um, you know, uh, I, I saw someone, um, I saw, you know, Shelby Elias, you know, he's, of course. A, he's a good dude. Love Shelby. Well, well, he had, he had a, he had a great, uh, Instagram post I saw just today and it was kind of encapsulated like how I think he goes, he goes, wealthy people aren't savers, they're investors. And so you, you don't suck your money away and then you're wealthy, you know, especially no. now with inflation. I mean, you're literally, your money is worth less when it sits there. You have to invest, which inherently has risk. And so I'm like fascinated with investing. I've been looking at investing, you know, literally my whole life. I mean, since college, I got crushed trading Intel options during earnings season. This dumbass attorney brother of mine is like, dude, let's, we'll do a straddle. We'll put a, uh, or it's called a strangle. So you put like, like, here's the price of the Intel stock. You put a little bit below on a put a little bit high on a, on a, you know, a call and whatever the option, you know, you, they report earnings and you assume it's going to go one way or the other and you're going to win, right? You know, you got both sides of the trade. Jeez. Dude, the thing just sat there. It didn't move, and then just and then they got worthless. They expired with theta, which is time decay. And so, you know, I got I've had my 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 butt handed to me many times. But my point is, I read all these subscription services, and it talks about business, and it talks about investing, and it talks about generating wealth, and it talks about what's going on. Like, you know, you probably don't know uh, these flying machines. It's basically like these flying helicopters. They're called e votals right? So you're literally these things are like. They're live. Like you could get like Cadillac has one. Toyota has one. Like these little one person things where you could take off and fly around. Like they're out there right now. You know, mm -hmm. what's coming in AI? I got this one subscription service. They're like 5G is dead. It's already time for 6G. Leo, low earth orbit satellite. You know, you see Starlink and all these other things. So uh, so it, it's really fascinating to read these things. And I read a ton. And then I love to get that information out. I kind of sprinkle it in sure. uh, together with my LinkedIn stuff. And so my thought was, that, you know, for something to be not so mortgage industry specific to have a broader audience, I would have to talk more broadly about um, investing or financials or wealth or just just topics that are beyond just housing our little cottage industry here. And so 
I, I had this like dumb idea, like KP talks dollars and cents, but not like penny cents, like SC. Yeah, yeah. cents. Yeah. I see. So I try and use common sense. Or as they say in Texas, horse sense. But, uh, you know, it's like I, I want to put this content out there and I want to help. You know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a Christian by nature. Um, you know, I know you're religious as well. And, um, you know, uh, that faith in me is here to serve others. How can I help others? How can I serve others? How can I put what I know? You know, I, I really openly talk about things that we're doing and, and investments that are working. And that's an abundance mindset. And so if I can share with others and help others who are maybe 22 win where I'm only winning now at 45, then that's better for that person and that person's family. And, you know, I'm, I'm happy for, for all of us to be winning together. So that's kind of the thought and the idea behind putting that content uh, behind KP uh, talks, dollars and cents. Although I haven't really boosted it. I haven't really done much for it. I haven't, I haven't like, I mean, there, I got videos like get like four views, you know, it's like, cause I'm not even trying. I just like, I just have some other service. It's like boosting it for me. But one day when I have this microphone, here it is over here again, this microphone like you have, and I'm sitting in a studio and I'm religiously consistently putting out content like you are, and I'm truly building that brand and it's a podcast or it's, it's digestible in a different way, you know, then people can look back at everything I've cataloged and dialogued along the way and saved so people can see the evolution of my thought and some, maybe some nuggets from the past. Cause these markets, they go in cycles and some things are going to come back again. And it's always nice. It's almost like journaling, you know? So, uh, you know, who, who doesn't, who has time for that when you can just speak your mind and just get everything off your chest and then, you know, have a, a peaceful sleep cause you, you've got a clear mind. I think that's the thing I love about podcasting the most. Like you said, it's like, it's like video journaling. It's like audio journaling and you do it so well. And I want to come back to this because this is, you do it so incredible. Like there's, there's literally, if you, again, if you haven't checked out KP's uh, talks, dollars and cents, you have to check it out. And you never just get four views, dude. You always have, especially on LinkedIn, you get thousands of views. Like it's amazing. And I know you don't do it for the views, which I love. I love that you said that. It's not about the views. It's that you love to share. You and I have that same mentality. We love to share value, not just about the mortgage industry. The mortgage industry is great. We love, we've been here for a long time, but you share the things that get you excited. The mortgage industry, sure, there are things that get both you and I excited about it, but there's other things like I talk about crypto right now, crypto and blockchain and the and the metaverse that's going on. Like that gets me all crazy, like investing in crypto. And like, I'm just like, oh my gosh, like Same the, the world that's going on, like my Solana, my Shibu Inu coin, shit coin. <laughs> But it's just, it's the, it. th it's the stuff that we, we enjoy talking about. So many people think, especially mortgage professionals, real estate professionals, they think they have to talk all industry all the time. When in a matter of fact, I watch KP uh, talks dollar and cents because I know it's not going to be mortgage all the time. I think it's fun. It's lighthearted. You're going to talk about the things that you really enjoy. That's when I think when it comes to building a brand that so many people miss is they think they have to be so centric in whatever industry they're in. And it's like, no, people, people don't care so much. People want to hear you. They want to hear the things that really get you excited outside of your daily, you know, daily grind, whatever it is, whatever your hustle, they want to hear about the side hustle. They want to hear about the things that you're really enjoying outside. Dude, I'm so glad you said side hustle. I read this article yesterday and it was talking about, you know, the new economy that one in three people have a side hustle. Oh yeah, dude. One in three people have a side hustle. 67% of those side hustles were created just since the pandemic, just since 2020. So, I mean, think about how that dynamic is changing, how that changes the gig economy, the labor force, uh, our jobs reports, our labor participation, how we even look at statistics. You know, we're measuring the health of our economy because of a household survey that the Bureau of Labor Statistics does. I mean, if someone left the workforce, are they counted as unemployed? We have many people leave the workforce, yet the unemployment rate has gone down. And so, you know, and we have a healthy, growing, strong economy. People are side hustling, you know? So it, it's just, it's fascinating to hear about these kinds of things. Like, you know, I, so it's just so funny that you brought up a side hustle because that is, that's the new normal. Just like work from anywhere is a new normal, not work from home, literally work from anywhere. anywhere. Your cell phone, you can literally work from anywhere. You don't have to be chained to a home. I, I, I'm on the road all the time. So it's like, you know, I, I have to have my cell phone. I have to work from anywhere. It's not just work from home. Um, so anyway, I, I love how all these different things are changing uh, all the time. And you and I get to talk about them and, and see how they're relevant with 
of what we do on a day to day basis. So how do you, let's kind of go into that because I love, I'm going to start changing the shred to side hustle, repeat every day that we see the <laughs> shred, so, acronyms for days, ladies and gentlemen. But so how do you come up with it? Like you said, how, where do you do your research? It sounds like you subscribe to a lot of different channels, which me and you both is probably, it's probably good we don't share because I'm, I'm with you i subscribe to so many like money like different channels that I'm, I'm i pay for monthly from benzinga to different like motley fool to all kinds of different crap that i listen yeah. to and i try to you know i try to of course i do our me and you we do our due diligence but at the same time where do you come up where do you find this content where do you where do you see it mainly or do you just bring it from a, a plethora of different uh different sources where do you find your content to share I, I like that. You said plethora. That's a, a, th a, a three amigos reference. And yes. hey, would you say we have a plethora? <laughs> plethora. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So look, I, oh, I, love Motley, I love Motley Fool. Uh, I have subscribed to their, uh, it's called Motley Fool One. Yeah. So you play like a fat, a flat fee. So it's like 14, 14 grand a year. Right. So it's all their services, literally every single one of their services. Whoa. And, and what I like about Motley Fool specifically is there, you know, the Gartner brothers, they started that and it's basically investing with a three to five year time horizon. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, I would call that long-term investing. So they're, they're looking for, and they have different, you know, funds and portfolios and different, and they have tons of content. Now I don't watch all the zoom videos. I don't have that kind of time, but I like the summer reports. I like um, the stuff they give. Benzica is good. That's actually a good service. I, I, um, I have their free version, but my, my little fun little trader app that I use is called interactive broker account. Oh yeah. And, and I like interactive broker because it allows me to trade, um, uh, in, internationally with no charge either. Other, unless of course there's like a, you know, uh, an ADR fee or some kind of fee on those, um, those exchanges. But in, in the app, when you click on a ticker symbol, it's got like little news articles and they have links to a lot of Benziga, um, ad, ads, but I love investor place. I love Louis Navaliers, one of my favorite people in platinum growth club, uh, Dr. Steve Sugarood over there. Um, I'm in um, I'm in Omnia, the Omnia Club over there. Or the uh, I'm sorry, Stansbury Research. Uh, Omnia Club is the investor place all in. It's like the yeah. Motley Fool one. And then I'm in the Alliance Circle, which is uh, the Stansbury Research. I like every one of their ser uh, services. And honestly, I can't even get, you know, I can't even get to all the articles that I that I see, but I try and skim through as many as I can. I'm in Casey Birch Research and Empire and Brownstone and Oxford Club. I literally am in all these different services. I'm getting articles like crazy every day. And there's some that I'm even missing. But the um, you know, the point is I just I love reading about business and investing and understanding because I I you know I want my money to work for me and my family over time. I can't, I'm not gonna be able to grind like this all the time. I'm 45, I've got four kids, you know, I love this business because. The more you work, the more you make, and you get it for, you get it right back immediately. And I love that transactional nature. But I'm not, I'm not my oldest is eight, and I'm already missing weekend soccer games. So I gotta, you know, I gotta be a better parent, a better husband. I'm an, I'm I'm horrible at both, and so um, and it's because I'm on the road. And so I just I have to get myself where I meet these financial goals to where I can have some financial freedom and not be chained to a desk. And that's not to say that I don't want to be part of PRMG forever. I just, I have to pass the torch to someone who's probably in their twenties or thirties right now to take over and come back. They don't have that young family. They're not married. You know, they, they're, they could learn from some of the things that I'm putting out there on LinkedIn and then be a better executive and run a better business or be a better entrepreneur. And then we can all build our communities and win together and create wealth for anyone in our presence. That's what I want to do. That's, I guess my brand, if you will, you know, that's, yeah. that's just my thoughts on the world. And I'm happy to share them with anyone that, you know, wants to listen if they think, you know, I, I'm, and I'm, and I try not to like you like leverage my LinkedIn, you know, you know, I actually get, I get people that hit me up and like, Hey, I, I like your stuff. You know, let me, let me hear more about PMG. I'll give you an example. So I won't name names, but I had a loan officer from Loan Depot um, a couple months ago and he goes, Hey, I really want to look at, um, you know, your company. I love your content. I want to, I want to, I want to know about PMG and possibly working there. So what I, what I said was, you know, our retail channel director has a saying that the grass is green where you water it. And I really like Brian Covey and I really like Alec Hansen, who's my neighbor. And I know these guys. And so I, I basically told him I don't use this platform to recruit. And I, I mean, here it is. No one had to know about that between except for me and that guy. Yeah. And I could have sent his name off to someone to recruit him. But I I didn't. And, and, and the reason I didn't is because I want 
I want people who watch my LinkedIn content to know that I'm not self-serving. I'm not trying to get people to join PRMG or work for PRMG or do business with PRMG. You're going to do that on your own. You don't need KP to do that. Does that have maybe some reverse psychology effect for our company? I don't know, maybe. But I want people to be open with me. I I, I had a major lender that I put in touch today um, with our uh, product and development training group, major competitor, like a major publicly traded competitor in touch with a uh, uh, capacity. I'm sure you've seen that, um, that yep. AI chatbot and help desk and workflow automation. You know, I put this group in touch with our call and we had a collaborative idea like how are we using this thing to be better as a lender? And I helped this lender and they're a competitor. So that to me, I guess, is my brand. And I, yeah. I think if people collaborate and act more like that, um, I think more of us will win. Um, of course, we can compete on the court, but we're off the court. You know, let's practice together in the off season and make each other better and, you know, entertain our audience or whoever that is. And, and, uh, and again, just, just keep winning together. Well, I think this is such an important point for whether you're starting a podcast or just starting to create content. This example that you shared is so perfect because people are going, and I've, I've got the exact same thing and I have stories that we could share similar to you. Like people coming to you like, Hey, like, how do I be part of this company? How do I do this? People, I'm sure people see what your content are like, Oh, I want to be joined PRMG. You're just, again, you're such a cool dude that people are like, man, if that's what, if that's the culture over at PRMG, if they, if this is the type of leadership that they surround themselves with, but that's just it. You don't do it for that reason, but that's what creating content does. It inspires other people and motivates other people. And I love your saying, you know, the grass is greener because our industry thinks that way so, so much. And I wish it wasn't so. So coming from an actual, like a genuine place, and I, I hate the word genuine right now, genuine, authentic, it's used too often. But again, you're creating the content from a real place, for a place because you want to do it. You're, you're not trying to recruit. You're not trying to do this. That's not what your brand is about, mm -hmm. which again, that's this entire conversation is about your brand. So I want to ask, what's one lesson? It's embarrassing for me. You know that, like, sure. You know, like, like the way you say it, it's like, you know, I mean, I get it. Like, I, I, I understand like the, the point of the conversation and branding. Yeah. I, I don't think of myself like, you know, does Gary, does, does Gary V think of himself as a brand originally? He probably didn't, but it kind of has run away from itself. And now it is, you know, and he, hundred percent. You know, but, but now he, he embraces it. And I, I'm still in that, um, uh, what's the, what's the, what, I don't know what phase I'm in. I, I don't know if I'm in denial. Yeah. But, is it not denial? Uh, Am I, I'm not, it's to say I'm not an acceptance yet. Okay. okay got it. Um, I still feel like I'm just being me. I'm just trying to help. You know, I just want people around me to win. And, and I haven't, again, like I joke, like I don't, I don't have like a film crew and you know, like I get jealous when I see dude at the last event, you had your boy walk around filming you and you just <laughs> walk around. I'm like, like, look how your brand has evolved. Now you got a dude that's like filming you on the scene. Like, I think that's cool. I mean, Will I be there one day? I don't know. Maybe, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I might be there. It can't hurt, you know, to have actually professionally, you know, filmed and edited content. People like it better than me just rambling on my stupid webcam at, you know, midnight, you know, exhausted. Maybe it would be better if I did that. And maybe I will get there one day, but um, you know, you're seeing the evolution uh, of each other's brand, if, if you will, right in front of our eyes. And, and to me, it's just me being me, you know what I mean? And I'm the exact same way. It's me being me. And that's anybody who's ever hung out, been around. It's me being me. Like you're going to get this. This is it. Like you see, you Dude, see you what shred. you get. Yo, you literally <laughs> shred. I've now snowboarded with you a couple of times and you literally shred. I Like you just rip through moguls. You rip through trees. Like you definitely grew up on a mountain. You absolutely shred on a snowboard. Uh, thanks, dude. I, I like to have fun with it. I like to I like to shred when we can. Speaking You're of, we, good. we got snow coming here in Utah today, man. Just a just a matter of time before industry conference right around the corner. We're gonna be, right, we'll be shredding number two, baby. Industry conference season two. You guys have to stay tuned for March, that. April Park so City. Let, as we as we start, I know your time is crazy. You got family, and I like you said. Both of us, but it's funny because as we have these conversations, building a brand, doing what we do, it's about our family, it's our why. You know, that's what a lot of it is behind that. Which so you I, and I met together, Simon Sinek. We did. Yes, right. that was amazing, yeah. dude. Actually, that was that was all you. That that story for another time. But it, if it weren't for KP, I got an incredible quick interview with Simon Sinek, and it was all because of KP. See, you guys surround yourself right. That that was amazing, though. That was a really fun one, dude. Well, that was all because of Joe Tyrell. That's He's right, Joe Tyrell. He gave, he gave me the backstage passes and we, we worked it out. So, uh, ice mortgage technology, head of all mortgage, Joe, he, yeah. uh, you he know, uh, Joe. Yeah. 
So what's one lesson out of everything that you've been doing this, creating content with your brand? What's the one lesson that you've learned? What's kind of one takeaway that you could share with people? Like, hey, if you're going to start doing this, like you said, just is it turn on the camera. What's one thing that you've really learned that you would share with everybody that kind of helps them? If you want to see, like you mentioned, you've seen both of our uh, brands evolve from where we, you and I both started years ago. What's, what's a lesson you would share with everybody else to kind of help them improve or grow? Um, I, I think... I think transparency is the new currency. Cool. And, and so that I, I think is, is what people are looking for. And, um, you know, I mean, I'm not out here, you know, telling all oh, our margin strategy online and talking about everything that, you know, all the conversations I have, you know, that are private, you know, I mean, there are some things that people expect not to be, you know, talked about in public. But having said that, I talk about a lot of stuff in public and I'm transparent about more stuff I think than others. And I think that's why there are at least, at least on LinkedIn within our, our, our industry. I think that's why there's eyeballs on what I put out because I'm not holding back a lot. I'm putting out there a lot. And if you see me off camera, I'm still very open there as well. And I think that transparency, I, I think is the new currency. You talked about cryptocurrency and the way that currency is transforming in this world. It's, flat it's open it's honest it's all in front of you it's all on a blockchain you can't hide it you can't fake it you can't fraudulently recreate it that is transparency and decentralized finance social media transparency i'm telling you transparency is the new currency that is like that is such a brilliant i don't think people think about it in that way but transparency is a new currency you have to be you can't fake this fake it till you make it or people can people have a bullshit meter that they can just see that when you're trying to fake it if you're not being real if you're not being genuine like and so i can guess i oh, can you totally could. Best, man i mean but i kind of like i can't hide it i kind of smile when i'm bsing you know, so oh yeah i let them oh, know yeah. i'm BSing, so it's kind of funny yeah you really do. If you've ever hung out with KP, you know, like he gives you this little smirk when you know he's lying. You're like, oh, that's it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. I'm that's just messing with you, you know? Yeah. So I like it. So, I mean, there's so many, I, I want to be respectful of your time. It's been so much fun having you on here. And it's been so fun to, like you said, to watch the evolution of both of our brands and doing it side by side, even from different places where we are in the industry, from you being an executive within the industry, me and kind of where I'm at. It's just, it's fun to collaborate. Like you said, helping one another. I still think there's so much room for everybody listening to this podcast and the show. We, we do this because we want to see you build your brand. We want to show for, showcase people from all around the industry, all around, you know, multiple different industries to share with this, but I want to end them with this KP. We are good friends over at Poddex. This is not sponsored by them. You just, you guys got to check Poddex out though. If you guys, if you ever lack conversation on your show, if you ever lack a conversation on your podcast, check these guys out. They do a phenomenal job. So I'm going to do is that three. Like, is that like cards of humanity? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, it actually is. They actually have a deck that's very similar to cards of humanity. <laughs> I haven't dared pull them out on the show yet because they're pretty, uh, they're pretty spicy, but Maybe one of these days, maybe you next know, time. I have you, on. you know, if you did, I'd be willing to participate. I know you would. And that's why like of all people, you and I could probably, I say there's not, you want to talk about transparency, ladies and gentlemen, we go a whole new place with KP here. So, okay, here we go. Three random cards here. going to pull from middle deck. First question is if you could, if you can instantly become one, what would you want to be an expert in? Oh, if you, if you could become an expert, what would you become an expert in? Oh, that, Definitely, uh, definitely stock market. Uh, yeah, when, like an like an options trader, options like, trader? Uh, like like overnight. I would, overnight. I I have l tried to learn through trial and error, and there's oh my gosh, just if you're if you're good at that, so. it's, just, it's it's such a great way to to like have like the action like we have in the in the mortgage business, except with you know stocks and financial instruments, and you know it's it's that same deuce that people like to originate. You know, have that like deal and closing and helping and serving, except it's a little more selfish. You're trying to make money, you know? So I love to do that. Well, I like that though. I like that. That's a fun one. Uh, okay. Second question. If you could be guaranteed one thing in life, Oh, this is interesting that we just went there. If you could gar be guaranteed one thing in life besides money, what would it be? Happiness. Happiness. I, I mean, that's what we all strive for. Right. And that that's a little, and that's a little selfish too, isn't it? Like I should say like, my kids, like all four of them to be happy and healthy. Like, that's probably what I should say. But man, I just want, I, I, it's like, you know how when you're, when you're on an airplane and they're like, in case of an emergency and you're with children, you put your mask on first. So you're okay. Cause you're the adult. Then you can take care of your child. I feel like as a parent, 
and a, and a husband or a spouse or a wife or whatever, a partner and a domestic relationship, kids, no kids, you have to be happy to be able to be happy with everyone else and everyone else around you grow. And, and, you know, um, some, I see some people who are really not happy in life and just, no. you know, and you know, some of them, they're just, they, they, they grew up in very cold places, you know, like maybe up in Alaska or something, but, um, but, you know, I, I, I think, you know, when you say happiness, I think that's, I don't think that's being too selfish. I think people, it helps you with your mindset, helps you with everything you do in life. So that, that's it. See, I would hundred percent agree with you. I don't think happiness is selfish at all. As a matter of fact, I think it's something that what, like when you meet somebody who's unhappy in life, you're, they're just hard to be around. If you strive to be happy, happiness is something that you have constantly. You should, people want to be around you. You exude it. People are like, Hey, I, I want to go feed off KP's happiness. Cause that dude is always happy. So I think happiness is absolutely one of those things. I love it. All right. Last question here. What is something you like that most people don't? Oh, um, I love soccer. Really? I, I didn't know you're a big soccer fan. Oh yeah. It's the best sport in the world. I mean, really? I, yeah, I love soccer. Most people are like, Oh, it's boring. It was one to nothing. I'm like, that's the best game. Like it was like all this buildup and all these missed shots. You're like, Oh, and then one goal, one time where you had an absolute release. Like to me, especially on like a world cup or a championship oh. level or English premier league, um, hell, even MLS has got some great soccer. They're getting even better. I, I love soccer. I love it. My, we have three kids. They're two, four, six, and eight. They appreciate mama. Uh, they are all in soccer except the two year old. So like mm -hmm. Saturday mornings, soccer, soccer, soccer. So it's a little frustrating, you know, cause they're still young and they're learning. And, um, but I, I love my sister was awesome. My sister, she was born in 79. I'm 76. She was so much better at soccer than I was for her level. She played on like this select. Uh, team called Sting 79. They won two out of three years in national tournament and select. She had a D1 scholarship to Texas Tech. You know, I mean, she like she's legit. So, so we're a big soccer family. It's nice. a team sport. You got offense, you got defense, you got the middle, you got managing, you got a goalkeeper. It's kind of like QC and sales and off. <laughs> and you know, you've got to you gotta work with other people and not team. everyone's the same and you're constantly running and it's endurance. The games are long. You have to be fit. You know, um and so I I just I think there's a lot um, of life lessons there along with, uh, along with soccer. And I don't think enough people like it. So are you an LA galaxy fan? I mean, no, there... Dallas FC Dallas, but, ah, there you go. Yeah. but I'm also Manchester United. And I know everyone from England hates them because they're like the Yankees, but I grew up in Dallas. And so they would only play either Chelsea or Manchester United games in the eighties and now you almost couldn't catch an EPL game and we didn't have an MLS. So you had to watch other leagues. And so they both had lions. One was red, one was blue. I picked the red. So there you go. That's, it. that's, that's why I like them. That's crazy. See, I had no idea. I had no idea you were a big soccer fan. We've talked soccer, I think, in the past, but I didn't know you were that big of a soccer fan. I remember I was I was in South America years and years ago when the World Cup was going on, and that's when I gained my appreciation. Like they live and die around soccer. Like the world shuts down. Like outside the U.S., oh, like yeah. when World Cup is going on, like football. It, oh yeah, football, dude. Football is like football. It, football. Oh, dude. Oh, oh dude. And you just like the world would erupt. Like we'd be in the streets, everything was dark, and then you just hear that announcer just go. And you just hear the world. Just I mean, it gave me an appreciation for soccer. It's still not my favorite sport in the world, but it's I didn't like you. There's so much going on. People just think, oh, they run up and down. There's not a lot. It's not a high scoring game. No, but those are the best games. That's when you know, like they're beating each other up. They're running their asses off on the field. They're putting. Oh yeah, dude. It's it's brutal. So there you go. If you didn't know that about KP, there's one thing you learned. And dude, I love women's soccer. I love yeah. watching the U.S. women's team. They are they are rough. I watched my sister playing growing up. Girls are rough. Like it's the roughest. You want to see like forget all of your like your uh you know your thoughts and you know and biases about you know genders and whatnot. Women on the pitch playing soccer, it is awesome. Like I love it. I love them beating each other up. It's the best. And I <laughs> I I just it's great. I mean, it's just it's just a fun, it's a fun sport to watch. I'm I'm really into it. So um, I'll take it even deeper than just soccer. I love U.S. women's national team soccer. I mean, it's, oh, they're so great. They're fun to watch. I mean, I could watch Alex Morgan score goals, you know, uh, Abby Wambach. I mean, you know, Mia Hamm. I mean, how far do you want me to go back? I mean, I, say, Mia, I remember those days, Mia Hamm. That's awesome. There you go, guys. See, 
You get to learn things. That's, that's, that's what we talk about. Going deep about the things that you really, that you have a true appreciation for. That's your brand. That's what we're sharing. That's what KP's talking about. So <laughs> cannot thank you enough for coming on the show, talking about this, sharing everything you have. Again, for being the influential leader that you are, leading from the front, having a, having a soon-to-be podcast. I'm going to keep holding his feet to the fire. It's going to sure. happen one, one day or another. It's going to happen. But again, for all that you do, KP, we love you. We appreciate you. And it's we're grateful to have you on the show, sharing all that you did. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Always, always an honor to be here with you. Anytime, you know I'm there for you, brother. Oh, I appreciate it. And again, that's it's just genuine. You know it's real. He's not just saying it, ladies and gentlemen. Guys, thanks for joining us on another episode of Brandon Shred. Make sure you guys tune in every single week. You can get another incredible guest like KP sharing how they're building their personal brand so ultimately we can help you get to that place where you can build that brand. With that, we appreciate you. We love you. Now it's time for all of you to go shred, go show up, hustle repeat every day. Actually on this one, it's side hustle repeat every day. See ya. Yes. Love it. Hey everybody. Thank you so much again for joining us on another episode of brand and shred. I hope you got as much value out of this episode as I did. And if you did make sure you hit that subscribe button below. So you don't miss a single weekly episode with the incredible guests that we're bringing you to help you build your personal brand. Click that subscribe button, share, and even leave a comment. We appreciate you. We look forward to seeing you next week on another episode of Brandon Shred.